Members, we've got quorum, so we will start. Sorry, the clock at nine o'clock will be nine in the line. Okay, members. Members, I advise that the special meeting of council uh, of Tuesday, the 2nd of March, 5 pm, is now open. It will be streamed live to the City of Adelaide website and a recording will also be published to the internet. Please note that an audio and visual recording is being taken at this meeting. This means that your presence at and any contribution you make to the meeting may be collected, used, disclosed, or published publicly by the council, including transferring outside of Australia. Item one on the agenda is acknowledgement of country. Council acknowledges that we're meeting on the traditional country of the Ghana people of the Adelaide Plains and pays respects to elders past and present. We recognise and respect their cultural heritage, beliefs and relationship with the land and acknowledge they're of continual importance to the Ghana people living today. We also extend that respect to other Aboriginal language groups and other First Nations who are present today. Item two on tonight's agenda is acknowledgement of Colonel William Light. Council acknowledges the vision of Colonel William Light in determining the site for Adelaide and the design of the city with its six squares and surrounding belt of continuous parklands, which is recognised on the National Heritage List as one of the greatest examples of Australia's planning heritage. Item three, members, apologies and leave of absence. I have an apology from Councillor Adkin today, tonight. Um, members, so last week uh, we had three council members request a special meeting of council to discuss the time critical matter of the Adelaide Football Club future proposals in the Adelaide Parklands. Um, the legislative requirement to convene the meeting uh, were only met on Friday afternoon and I believe at this point that the CEO was notified formally and based on queries received over the weekend, the agenda wasn't published until Monday afternoon until there was some clarification. Um, uh, while there was a motion suggested on Friday, um, I believe there were still discussions on the wording uh, and it was outside the five day notice period. So therefore it's a motion without notice and in keeping with normal regulations, motions without notice are not published in the agenda as they are without notice and can be raised in the meeting. Um, it is encouraged, of course, the practice that reflected in our standing orders uh, of 229 that council members do circulate their proposed motions to other council members prior to the meeting and I believe that this has happened. Um, on balance um, and looking through uh, the work that was uh, over the last few days, um, I have agreed to allow the motion without notice as the Adelaide Football Club has indicated that the matter is time sensitive um, and nor does this decision have any budget impact on the council. I hope that covers everything and uh, so of course I will go to item four, the agenda, which is the motion without notice, Councillor Hyde. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. I move um, as it's printed and seek a seconder. I'll look for a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Canal. Councillor Hyde, would you wish to speak to it? Um, just briefly, because this matter has been aired quite substantially over recent days, weeks, months, years. Um, uh, I think you know, noting, noting media reports and such that um, the Aquatic Centre is dead, and certainly this rules that out um, entirely in my view. Um, uh, and uh, noting as well that there doesn't seem to be a desire from the club to divorce their training and their um, and their administrative functions from one another, um, and noting that we've had a request to meet with the club, I think we should be very clear um, ourselves around the boundaries of what such a discussion would be. Um, I certainly have no desire to hand over a parkland to any organisation for them to put their headquarters on there as a, you know, a, a, as would possibly be envisaged by the Crows. Um, and I think before they go and um, per the CEO's advice and the Lord Mayor's request, prepare something to present as much as possible publicly to us, and they're obviously going away and doing work on that. Um, I think we need to set the ground rules now and just say what we're ruling in, what we're ruling out. Of course, what we're ruling out um, by virtue of this motion is just about anything. 
um, uh, and uh, you know, it could leave the door open for them to just use an oval to train on. I know we have lots of ovals in the parklands which were used as sports fields and are not used as sports fields and the city, we haven't actually returned them to sort of biodiversity areas or what have you, so they can potentially do that. Um, uh, leaves the door open in that degree, but it closes many, many other doors. And I think the certainty of closing those doors would be welcomed by our community um, uh, who you know, were, were concerned at the discussion last time. And I appreciate those concerns. Of course, we were balancing that against a potential public benefit. And we never said yes. And myself and other councils always maintained that if the public benefit wasn't there, then we would say no. I think I'm on the record as saying that. And the public benefit for them building a standalone headquarters in the parklands is, in my view, nil. Um, and so I think now is the time uh, to unequivocally say no. Councillor Connell, did you wish to speak? Ms. O'Brien? Uh, Councillor Moran. Um, I wish to move an amendment, which I have flagged. Um, I wish to add after um, there were in part two after indoor training facilities and an aquatic centre. Um, and should I get a second? I'm happy to second that. I'm happy to take it. If, if I could actually just get that wording, just uh, so. Is that correct? Is that what you're after, Councillor Moran? Uh, yes, and the reason is that while I accept the mover says it's dead and buried, this was the most contentious part of the pros, um, and I wouldn't vote for part three. Um, any future proposals scares the hell out of me. Um, because that doesn't mean ovals and it doesn't mean cricket pitches, that means more buildings. So without the comprehensive list there, they can't think of anything else they can possibly build there, uh, I wouldn't be voting for this motion because it does leave the door open if we don't name every single building they can't put there. And I think we have now, so I'm more than happy to uh, to ask the mover to incorporate that. Yeah, just a point of, clarity, so, point of clarification on this. Um, just want to, the, the reading of this, whether that uh, in the ordinary reading specifies that this excludes an aquatic centre where it is a public facility, yes. or is this seeking to exclude an aquatic centre that is simply a private facility and not exclude an aquatic centre that may be a public facility? As you can see, there's a bit of if you see what I mean. Oh. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, sorry, can you explain that again? So, I that. so perhaps if we say uh, and a private? No. Oh, it's a, I think it's there. I think it's there. That it's not a public facility. I think it's there. As they suggest, Robert. I mean, Could I ask you to put your microphone on, please, Councillor Moran? Sorry, with, with, with respect, Lord Mayor, the point, of, point of clarification is about how this is going to be interpreted, which I don't think is the preserve the move of the motion. Um, I, I will actually the, ask some advice just in terms of the interpretation. Yes. Thank you. CEO, Acting CEO. Uh, thank you, through the Chair. Um, that I would interpret that as um, council not supporting any proposal from the Adelaide Football Club that includes etc etc and an aquatic centre or any other building that is not a public facility. So uh, if it, am I allowed uh, to? Uh, sort of, perhaps if sorry, just, Uva wants to explain her intent, I don't think she quite finished speaking when she had just made that amendment. So, uh, so am I, now that that's been that accepted been, by the mover? Has been accepted I, by the mover? Yes, yes. yes. So, yeah. am I members, members, speak just a moment, just one it's, moment, it's, Councillor Moran. It's, it's, it's moved, it's been accepted. So, by the I actually yeah. need, can I formally have that accepted by the mover? Yes. And the seconder? Okay, thank it's you. Moved, it's moved, it's moved now. It doesn't need to be clarified. Councillor Moran hasn't finished speaking, so. Uh, yes, look, uh, this has been a long time coming, and I'm glad that there has been a, as I said in my emails, a come to Jesus moment. Um, I think we've wasted the Crow's time for a long time when our, our uh, and I think in some of uh, the movers' emails, when our, our public did not support it. Um, the park plans are precious. Um, um, point of order, this is not an amendment, this is a variation. No, Councillor Moran is speaking to the motion. Okay. Can I Thank say you. again now, because it puts me off when 
Councillor Moran. It does put you on. Councillor Moran. Um, yes, I think this. Um, I don't think this is a perfect motion because I don't think part three um, is very good. I think that um, anticipates future proposals. Um, and as the mover said, we, none of us would have any problems with um, overalls being leased, shared, etc., etc. Um, so I prefer that to have gone. But now I'm very happy that it's included the Aquatic Centre with the other listed buildings. The parklands are precious. Um, our public, we have consulted in a funny, ham-fisted way with the public via the media. Um, and the answer has pretty much come back from the people that uh, are most concerned with parklands. And it, was, it always interests me that the, the advertiser in particular seems to paint North Adelaide and Adelaide City, our lecturer, as just selfish um, uh, people that want to hold everything back. Um, and I think it's particularly over North Adelaide, but it does include the whole electorate. When, when you look at the response people gave to handing over corporate facilities in our park lands, allowing that, they were as broad as one could, could get. There are as many people in North Adelaide, they just build it as there are in, um, in any other suburb. So that, that, I think that's exposed like that people in South Australia value the park lands, not just the people of the LA City Council area. Everybody was outraged. I think we fell into this a bit naively. Um, we thought maybe they'd just like to repair the aquatic centre for us and use some of the offices at the back. Oh, obviously that was ingenuous, disingenuous. Um, but we should have said no earlier. Um, the independent group called many, many a meeting to do that um, and uh, we never achieved a quorum. But I'm not going to be churlish. Um, I, th I, I think a good politician changed his mind and accepts that, um, that the opinions and views of others were right all along. And um, I, I praise Alex Hyde for that. He has now, first time I've seen the makings of maybe a modern <laughs> politician. <laughs> so, Councillor and Councillor Sims. <laughs> Thanks, um, Lord Mayor. It looked like uh, Councillor Moran. I also want to acknowledge um, Councillor Hyde. You know, it's a courageous thing to change your mind when you've got it so wrong. Um, and, you know, it's very clear to me that Team Adelaide were wrong on this. Um, and, Councillor uh, Sims, can we just debate the motion in front of us? Well, it's very clear to me that this council um, had taken the wrong position um, on this issue, uh, the majority of the councillors, and that was opposed um, by councillors Moran, Martin, Donovan um, and myself, um, and most recently councillor Mackey. Um, and we've been arguing all along that it's not appropriate to um, carve up the parklands and give it away to um, private corporations. Um, and that argument has been um, uh, vigorously opposed um, by a majority of, um, of councillors. So I'm really, really pleased. I was delighted to um, read about the fact that this meeting had been called in the paper. Um, I was delighted to read in the advertiser that we're going to have this special meeting um, because I do recognise that it is really, really um, an important um, issue for our community. I think tonight is a huge win um, for the people of the City of Adelaide. It's an example of uh, people power in action. And the people have been speaking out about this for a very long time. Ever since the Crows, um, ever since there was reportage um, under a, a cloak of secrecy um, around the uh, Crows reaching out to the City of Adelaide, ever since um, there was reportage of that, uh, the community have been up in arms. Um, and uh, I think um, finally we're seeing some leadership from this council when it comes to uh, protecting our parklands and I really welcome that. I think we do need to learn the lessons from this. Um, the process of council's engagement with the Crows, um, council's exclusion of the public and refusal to consult in a meaningful way um, I think was uh, deeply embarrassing for this council. Um, and caused a huge amount of discomfort in the community. And that's why I've been arguing for a long time that we need to um, amend the uh, unsolicited um, proposals guideline 
um, and why I'll be moving at our next meeting of council for us to exclude the parklands from the unsolicited proposals guideline so that we ensure that we never go down this path again um, and ensure that we never see um, the parklands being um, corporatised in this way. But tonight is a big win for the community and um, I thank Councillor Hyde for his about face um, and the other councillors that are changing their position as well. I think that's a really good thing. Excuse me. Uh, excuse me, madam. Um, I could ask you please not to call out from the gallery, otherwise I'll ask you to leave the meeting. Thank you. Um, Councillor Martin. Um, yes, I wanted to ask a question first. I circulated it to the administration in advance of the, uh, the meeting some four hours ago, but <clears throat> there's been no response. Is it possible to read part two as to say that we make it unequivocally clear that we will support a public facility on the parklands? I mean, that's the converse of what's being Back proposed. The CEO. Can I ask you if you if there's any way to read it that way? I don't think there is, but Tom, do you want to? Through you, Laura Mara. Look, the reality is that the, the emotional diagnosis is quite explicit in regards to the Adelaide, Adelaide Football Club. If you want to interpret it, you would have to deliberately put something in which actually either excludes or includes whatever you're wanting to see there, Councillor, because it's reflective of the Adelaide Football Club. No, I understand that, and that's specific to the Adelaide Football Club. But if it says we will not accept anything that is not a public facility, uh, can the administration give us an assurance that it is uh, likely to refuse an application for a public facility? Acting CEO. I have that many double negatives. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So too many double negatives for my small brain, yeah, sorry. Um, Tom. <laughs> Through you, uh, presiding member, that if council was wished a public facility to be entertained on the parklands, we would present it to council for consideration. Ultimately, it's in council's hands, and we would present it to them. But uh, we'd be seeking direction from council where they want to go. This doesn't close off specifically a public facility on the parklands or in any other part of the Brown brand site within the CBD. Okay. Um, and uh, Lord Mayor, can I ask the mover if there's an intention in including those words in there? I'm, I'm just interested to understand why those particular words are in there. They're your words. I took them directly from your email. I'm trying to keep you happy, Phil. No, <laughs> so if we can actually, members, members, this, Sorry, it's not a free for all, okay? So Councillor Martin, uh, you've asked a question. I actually think it's quite straightforward in terms of what it says. I, I can't see any, no, it's fine. Um, you know, yeah. weaving of anything. I think it's very, very straightforward. Um, um, and also given point two, point three makes sense. So if there is a future proposal, obviously there's no proposal that will be entertained that's on the parklands and it's not a public facility and that would actually come through again for um, assessment by council. I don't okay. think... So oh, I think all right, look, I'll, I'll accept that at face value and, and I'll accept that what's being proposed is as it seems. Um, and you will forgive me, but calling a, a special meeting for something that's been on the table for such a long time with just a few days notice, with the motion being circulated less than 24 hours ago, and given its importance, it's just a motion without notice for which the administration provided com comment only a few hours ago, you can understand that we need to be very careful that we don't mean something in there that's unintentional. Now, having the assurance of the mover that there is no uh, other intention than what's there, I'm very happy to accept that. Um, I, I must say I'm just delighted to hear and see that he's had this epiphany um, because there were some long and bitter arguments, as you would remember, Lord Mayor, in the chamber, for a very long time about excluding uh, the crows from the parklands or indeed inviting them in. Uh, and we have, uh, we've had a history in this place of debating this at length, not least um, uh, keeping it confidential so that people didn't know uh, that it was going on. And secondly, uh, declined on numerous occasions 
uh, to actually ask people the threshold question, do you want the crows on the parklands uh, with the building? So, you know, this, this actually comes full circle and I'm absolutely uh, uh, grateful to Councillor Hyde for that. I think he's displayed some uh, extraordinary leadership yeah. skills that I haven't Strong noticed before. Out. He, he has done an good. exceptional job. And oh, no. Lord Mayor, I'm, I'm not seeking to take the mickey out of him. I'm being serious. I think it's a good We're step forward. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Martin. And Lord Mayor, um, may I commend this to other members and particularly those who I know uh, may still have some doubts about whether or not uh, we should invite the crows in to look at the aquatic centre or, or some other site. This actually is a step forward, one that will be embraced by the community of the City of Adelaide, but much more broadly, as other speakers have said, by the people of South Australia. I, I congratulate Councillor Hyde and this council for moving forward in this way. Councillor Knoll. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Knoll. Yes, thank you. Sorry, I was just looking for my button. Um, uh, and yes, I, I supported uh, this motion, I seconded it, simply because if we look at uh, this proposal versus the other one, uh, and yeah, the unsolicited uh, uh, bid process obviously was uh, uh, not one that you, that was worked in this instance, but the point is that um, waiting for a, a um, needs analysis, etc., which was the point of the, the last proposal, which is what uh, uh, hinged on what decisions that you would make at least being informed by the community. Uh, when you're looking at that versus this particular um, motion and then also what we're trying to prevent is that there is no community benefit that we can even consider um, uh, in this. And so that being the case, well, it's quite clear that we don't need, uh, we, you know, we need to let them know that this, there is of no interest because there was no decision uh, by myself or even understanding of what, what I was going to do, you know, what way I was going to uh, consider this, simply because I did not have the facts of the community. And I think, um, you know, that was because we have a facility that needs help and what are we going to do? And this was going to be a process by which we get clear clarity from our community about what they expected from the facility, but also giving us some uh, opportunity to give people ideas on how someone could potentially put some process forward that may have some interest. So, but in this case, it's quite simple. Uh, there isn't any community benefit uh, uh, by it, and therefore we should just uh, dismiss it out of hand and just leave it at that. And I think, uh, uh, you know, this will negate any of those other long-winded uh, um, you know, arguments that are just, we actually what I consider used for political purposes rather than necessarily being informed uh, about what is the best option for our community. And I think uh, we need to separate those two simply because the last one did take a long time, where sadly it should have been quicker. Yeah. Deputy Lord Mayor. Uh, I just want to also reiterate that uh, uh, what Councillor Connell said, that there was no decision made in regards to the partnership with uh, the uh, Adelaide Football Club in re with the Aquatic Centre. Um, it was the first time in which we could consult on what the actual ratepayers want to do with the Aquatic Centre and we were presented with a proposal with the Adelaide from the Adelaide Football Club. So we just want to make it clear that, you know, this was something that the, we put forward to the public. Um, a majority of council wanted it to be consulted, decision to be made from the public. Um, it wasn't. Um, a, well, I mean, this it wasn't something. Well, this is a rewrite of history. It, well, well, I just um, want to be clear. I'm clarifying. Members, sorry, members, members. So I just want to clarify a few of the comments that were made in regards to um, it, it, it actually uh, that we made a decision on this matter when no decision was actually made with uh, when actually the Adelaide Football Club withdrew the proposal for the Adelaide Aquatic Centre. The new proposal was for another site within the parklands and I commend uh, the Deputy, uh, sorry, uh, Councillor Hyde uh, for uh, bringing this forward in, in order to um, stop any further discussions um, happening uh, for a, a headquarters uh, because uh, we, without any community um, value to them. So um, it is, we have to be sure that what we are discussing here is actual in regards to the rest of the parklands, not the aquatic centre. And that's why I wanted to clarify a few of the comments that were made. And, uh, you know, I actually feel that the Adelaide Football Club would led down a garden path in regards to the aquatic centre because I believe that they, um, we were, you know, wanting to speak to them and, uh, 
have um, go into partnership with them. So let's let's not let's not talk about this in regards to it uh, being other than what it is. Councillor Mackey, did you wish to speak? <coughs> Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, since I was elected in the middle of last year and the, the Adelaide Football Club withdrew their previous um, uh, unsolicited bid uh, before uh, that campaign, before my election, I, I, th I thought, wow, I've dodged, a, uh, had a lucky a lucky pass um, and um, you will understand, and, and Councillor Hyde, I just want to clarify, I, I, I was suspicious when a meeting, a special meeting was announced via the media with no communication internally from the administration. And then when the meeting, the, uh, the paper was issued with no motion, I was doubly suspicious. I, I recant and I take that back. I, I accept at face value. Yes, so Councillor, I will actually get you to expect to the motion yep, okay. rather than the Thank you, Lord media Mayor. on the weekend. Um, I will be supporting this motion. Uh, uh, while there are aspects of its wording that, that given time and proper consideration might have been finessed, the intent is clear. I support the intent. Um, I, I, I sought election on, with an undertaking to the Adelaide Parklands Preservation Association uh, in responding to their questions that I would maintain this position. I'm very pleased that it feels as though at least a substantial majority of council have now come to that view um, and I, I would commend uh, Councillor Hyde for the motion. Members, if I could say a few words. Just make sure. So um, I do actually think that we need to be cognizant that uh, that was the first time that we used the unsolicited bids guidelines or process. Um, we all learned a lot from that and we are actually working through that at the moment. And of course, I think this will also make the Adelaide's Parklands Authority very pleased because they were not consulted through that process. Um, I do also uh, take umbrage that a decision was made because no decision was made and we took, we, the only decision we made was to take the proposal to the public yeah. so they could see what we were discussing, yeah. which was in confidence because of the unsolicited bids process that we're under. Um, I, I also want to make the comment that, um, so it's not interpreted that we uh, are trying to exclude the Crows from being the City of Adelaide. We, uh, this makes it very clear we're not looking for any administrative facility or construction of buildings on the parklands as opposed to the Crows coming here and using ovals or however else they want to do their training. Um, they are the Adelaide Football Club and uh, I think we should support them if they want to come and do some of their training in and around the city. Um, but this is specific to administrative buildings. Um, we have a Parklands Act, we have an Adelaide Parklands Authority, we have the Adelaide Parklands Management Strategy, none of which support uh, constructions of, of the uh, size that was in the last proposal. I do also note that we haven't seen a proposal, nor have they actually said where they were looking. Um, they did seek to speak to us with some urgency, and that is because there's obviously funding around that that they have to make decisions on very quickly. Um, and uh, I do actually appreciate the fact that they wanted to, through John Olson, the new chair, come and have another discussion with us. Um, I think this makes it clear the parameters around which we are happy to have that conversation with them, if if there be any other conversation. Can I just ask a question? Yes, so certainly, Councillor Moran, and I'll go back to Councillor Hunt the, summer. Uh, sorry, on the um, urgency, uh, as I get most of my information from the advertise these days, wasn't Mr Olson saying that he didn't want the nursery and that he all he wanted to do was have a chat before June? Uh, no, there was some other urgency around the funding details and and also decisions through the SANFL. Um, the requirement uh, was, I think, by the end of February, he was trying to get some indication. So, um, so there is there is real time sensitivity around this. And could I just um, make a point of clarification? When uh, some members said that there were encouragement decisions, I think what we are talking about, not in the fact that we call meetings. Meeting after meeting. Thank you, Councillor yeah. Councillor Moran. We've actually you've spoken already, yeah. Councillor Councillor Kerra. Thank you. So I will go back to Councillor Hyde to sum up. Um, thank you, Lord Mayor. I think you've summed it up quite well yourself. Um, I fully agree, and I was very pleased to see that 
Um, you were um, you know, publicly listed as, as being in support of this idea as well, and I appreciate our discussions. Um, uh, you know, the sentiment I think amongst all councillors was there, and I, and I hope this is um, this is a unanimous um, decision. Certainly, the the whole uh, AFC AAC um, thing was, uh, I suppose, indicative um, of some of the problems that we've had, and probably inflamed some tensions, but. Um, I'm very pleased to see that all councillors appear to be on board with this um, with this motion. I, I would just make the point just quickly that I am still applying the same values test that I applied to the idea of them building a standalone headquarters. Um, uh, it's the same test that I would apply to them rebuilding a, commu uh, uh, you know, a community centre for the public. Um, they've obviously ruled that out and I think as they've ruled that out we have to rule out um, all of the other options um, that they may be considering as well, because otherwise then you are just giving over parkland to them with no community benefit, with, with nothing. And that's that's certainly not what we're here to do. Um, uh, you know, and I, I appreciate the contributions of others. I've tried to capture the intent of everyone here and, and Councillor Martin's words as well, um, uh, as well as as well as Councillor Moran, who so had a discussion with governments around whether they can be included. So. Um, uh, yeah, I hope this gets unanimous support um, across the chamber. I'm sad Councillor Abraham today isn't here because I'm sure he would be voting for it as well. Members, on that note, we'll go to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? Could I have that recorded as unanimous? And thank you, for members, for working together over the last few days and for circulating the motion ahead of the meeting. Thank you, members. I close the meeting uh, and we will have a very short break before we go to committee. Thank you. We can get straight into it. That's all good with everybody. Unless anyone else wants more time. Okay. Uh, advise that the meeting I advise that the meeting of the committee will be streamed live. The City of Adelaide website and recording will be published to the internet. Please note that an audio and visual recording is being taken in this meeting. This means that your presence and any contribution you make you make to the meeting will be collected, used, disclosed or published publicly to the Council, including transferring outside of Australia. Council acknowledges that we are meeting on traditional country of the Ghana people on the Adelaide Plains and pays respect to elders past and present. We recognise and respect their culture, heritage, beliefs and relationship with the land. We acknowledge that they are continuing importance to the Ghana people living today. 
And we also extend that respect to other Aboriginal language groups and other First Nations who are present today. Apology from Councillor Martin. Uh, I now seek a move and a seconder for the minutes of the meeting of the six, on the 16th of February and the 23rd of February. So, for the move, Councillor Connell, seconder, Councillor Kira. Um, would you like to speak to her? Um, would you like to speak to her, No. Okay. Um, would anyone else like to speak to the motion? No. Um, those in favour? Those against? Motion's carried. We don't have any presentations tonight. We'll go straight to uh, 5.1. Um, Michelle, is it something? Can I just present presentations? No, no, we have no presentations. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, well, yes, Councillor Moran. Can I speak? To the presentation. Is there any questions? That's she's asking. No, sorry. Yes, Councillor Moran. Look, I'm, I'm horrified to see in this um, that the uh, the idea of the try before you buy, try before you buy, which has been resoundingly panned, even when Priscilla Corbell moved it, it was withdrawn or suggested it was withdrawn. Then it popped up again in another workshop, panned again, and now we still see it. Uh, can we just remove try before you buy? No landlord, no um, uh, prospective seller is ever going to let you try before you buy. Okay, it's a ridiculous idea. Priscilla was embarrassed as soon as she thought about it and withdrew it, and yet it once again popped up here. Um, the rest is fine. Well, I, I don't understand why we pick one. Um, well, tonight it's group. a committee, a Council Moran. I think we're uh, looking just to um, have some feedback for questions. Yeah. Um, well, I'm sorry, uh, Chair, isn't that enough? Where wasn't I clear enough in my sure. feedback? Sure, I, I was about to say to you that if you really want it removed, you can attend to that to next Council meeting. And don't you want my feedback that I want that? Well, administration would like I'm not allowed to talk to the administration. I have to refer to talk to you. Sure. Certainly, Council Moran. It was made very clear last meeting. I'm just letting you know and giving you advice that you can address that in the Council meeting next week. So, what is the point of this if I can't air I'm my I'm following the, uh, the procedure in regards to committee, and that is so you're uh, actually taking your off viewpoint. And giving you my views. Absolutely, I'm not this. telling you off at all, Council Moran. It's difficult to tell the difference. Council Moran, I am not telling you what off. What is your I advice said, to me? Then? What, what, is, what is the problem? Just so I understand. I'm telling you that you can actually bring this forward uh, to the next council meeting. Am I correct, uh, CEO? Or is there anything more you'd like to add to that? Uh, through the presiding member. So the intent of committee tonight is to probe administration in terms of the, um, understanding in relation to the content of the report. Um, the report does address um, that particular aspect, Councillor Moran. We have had mixed views around this table. It is a recommendation of the administration that we would like to consider it, but of course, Council next week will make a decision and can resolve otherwise. Okay, so, can I continue on um, uh, exploring this? Certainly. I don't understand. Who here thinks it's a good idea for us to uh, suggest? No, I'm just told by okay. government. But I don't understand why we bother to do these things when we tell the administration no, this is a this is a, a silly idea, and it pops up again and again. What is the point of me saying my views when it was shared unanimously last time, and yet again it's still here? What 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 is the point of me wasting my time and the other councils wasting their time if the administration is not going to listen? Did you not listen to it here as last time? Well, I'm so sorry, Councillor Moran, please don't no, sorry, talk to staff me. and well, wave you know, your hands. You just told me I had senior to talk staff to saying, oh. have you not listened? That is not appropriate, sorry. Mary just told me to address the staff. It's questions. It's questions. It's questions. Where's the Okay, did you not hear us say last time that we thought it was a silly idea? Okay, we are we are asking the, the purpose of the committee meeting tonight and every other time is for uh, for administration to have respectful questions 
to be answered by question. well it wasn't respectfully said but anyway respectful questions in regards to um, the uh, recommendations that they're putting forward to the council meeting next week i do understand you, that thank you. you are more than welcome to make any uh, recommendations or to uh, adjustments to the recommendations I'm aware of that. yeah i know you but are I want to but know why this is, it's like the death of a thousand cuts. I'll put it very respectfully. I don't think any administrator here knows that we panned this idea. In fact, it was panned the minute a councillor in another council put it up. So could, could somebody explain to me why you think, obviously the administration thinks this is a fabulous idea. Thank so you for your question, Councillor Moran. Michelle, would you like to explain the rationale for including this? Thank you. Uh, so through the chair, um, so perhaps I'll just introduce it. As you're aware, in, in June 2019, there, is, there was a request from council for us to look specifically at millennials um, and to engage millennials. And then we had a council workshop um, in uh, November 2020 last year. And certainly, um, Councillor Moran, at that workshop, you expressed your um, uh, <coughs> views that it was not a good idea to do the trial before you buy. But it wasn't a lot, sorry, can I just interrupt you? We went round the room, and I don't think there was a council in the room, and Mary was very vocal about it, being in that, um, in that in her profession. There wasn't one councillor that supported it. So why are we discussing it again? Councillor so, Council, so. Council Moran, may I suggest that maybe you uh, address this in council chamber next week with an amendment to the recommendation so you don't have to hear about it again? No, I mean, obviously the Because we can't do anything about it tonight. Because tonight is not decision. Tonight it's not just decision making. Uh, it's really about um, questions directed to the to the administration in regards to the recommendation. But I would suggest that if it's something that you do do not want to see again, you know the procedure and just uh, amend the recommendation next week. Well, with all due respect, Madam um, Chair, if the administration is so attracted to this idea, I certainly won't be removing it, and we can try and buy as much as we like. I'd be interested to see how that works. Sia, would you want to add to that? Because I think it's more of a directive from council that you require. Is that correct? Uh, do you need a direction from council elected members in regards to trying before you buy? No, no, no. Uh, and council next week, next, yes, in the council chamber next week, you can give them that directive. And if uh, elected members all agree to that, then that will be removed and not be a direction from uh, from uh, administration as they received it clearly from the elected members. So well, I, I won't be removing it. I'm now interested to see what sort of homeowner will say, "Come and live in my house and you can try it before you buy." It. I think that's a fantastic idea. I won't personally be doing that, but I will be asking lots of other people. Scrappy Brown's got a very nice good design. I think I'll try that before I buy it. The end house would be nice. Okay, well, we've got it on record. Thank you. With your opinion, anyone else have got any questions or any um, matters for clarification in regards to the recommendation? Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I'd like to hear Michelle finish what she was starting to say just before. <coughs> Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, through the chair. So, um, certainly there were comments that um, not all members were supportive of that, but um, my my takeaway from that meeting was that there was still sufficient interest to bring a report back to council. I think probably what's really important to note is that um, next week we're seeking. Um, well, we're seeking council to note that we're continuing with the marketing campaign that council's previously endorsed, which millennials is a key focus. We're also um, seeking council's um, approval to um, more formally consult with um, an under 40 city living reference group to brainstorm ideas on the try before you buy and the other types of initiatives as well. Um, 
we, um, I think what's really important is we're not actually coming back to council next week and asking for approval for a try before you buy. Um, as Council Moran has indicated, there are a number of um, potential issues and risks that we would need to consider really fully whether there's interest from the private sector. So what we're actually asking is whether council would support us going away and fully scoping up a try before you buy um, proposal so that um, we could then bring it back to council in a much more considered way in terms of what the length of time might be, what the costs might be, who the key players might be, for example. Um, in the same way, we're also um, asking council if it would approve us scoping up a graduate retention strategy. Importantly, that particular strategy is something that we really need to partner with the state government and the university sector with. Um, and then lastly, we're asking um, council to note that we will be bringing back um, some work in relation to a um, rate remission scheme. We've done quite a lot of work on that internally with our rates department. And we're also um, noting that that was subject to the state government um, doing a whole lot of um, initiatives to support um, residential uptake in the city as well. So that's um, subject to the state government's um, contribution to, to that idea as well. Does anyone else like to um, ask any questions or yes, Councillor Hyde? Um, uh, just when when this was sort of when this all started was pre-pandemic, I think, through the chair. Yeah. Has there been any investigation done as to um, sort of expats from South Australia that we might like to attract back as well and how we would go about attracting them back, whether they're from the eastern states, for example, probably people in my age cohort, um, uh, young professionals and what have you, or whether they're others um, who are slightly older, still under 40, but have moved overseas um, for many of the similar reasons that they left South Australia. Has there been anything done to work out how many there are um, and what these sort of opportunities to try and drag people back? Um, so through the chair, um, so we haven't done anything specifically in relation to millennials. We are obviously um, tracking the data as it comes through, comes through. Obviously, the ABS is the best source of data, and there's some lag times around that. Um, more, um, there's obviously anecdotal. Um, stories that we've heard about people coming back and, and residing here and perhaps working overseas, but we, we can um, certainly look and to see what there might be that's formally um, taking account of those, um, you know, migration in and out during that period and if we've got any information, bring that back to us. Councillor Sims. Thanks, um, Chair, and thanks to the team for the um, work on this. A question about um, young people, millennials, and the rental market. Um, I know, uh, sorry, through you, Chair. Um, I know that uh, um, in Adelaide, most people are renters, um, and South Australia is quite unique because it still doesn't have, um, what well, still has no fault uh, evictions at the end of a rental contract, and there's bans on things like having pets and stuff like that. Have you had any um, information on how um, the lack of protection for renters' rights is impacted on whether or not people would want to live in the city of Adelaide? And in particular, to, to Councillor Hyde's point about whether they might want to move you know, to South Australia and live in the CBD, is that something that you've looked at? Um, so through the chair, no, it's not something that we've looked at specifically. Is it something that would be considered in terms of, given a lot of young people are going to be renters, living in share housing, is that an area that uh, that would be worth, through you, Chair, um, would be worth exploring? Uh, I think this report is more about attracting millennials to live and work in the city and not about renters' rights but at this point. Am my I point is that... Uh, just one moment. Is that correct, Michelle? Um, so through the Chair, certainly in an area that touches on that is the... Um, the policy that will be being bringing back to council shortly in relation to homelessness, social and affordable housing. Um, and I suppose that speaks to what council's role as a local government is. Um, for something like that, obviously that would be around advocacy rather than- I understand that. If I could just respond though through you, um, 
share. The reason why I raise it is most uh, young people, particularly millennials, are not in a position to be able to afford to buy their own home. They are renters. So if we're wanting to attract um, young people to live in the city, um, I, I realise I can't, um, sorry, I'll be careful with what I say because I'm not able to speak freely in a committee, um, but would it not be the case uh, that given most young people are renters, um, that we should also consider their rights in the rental market and how we might advance those. Well, maybe that's what uh, Tribe Before You Buy is in this report, but um, I think... No, uh, my point is they're not uh, able to but, buy. But I, I think at this point, I think what administration are saying is that they haven't explored it through this report. No, okay, it will come through enough. a separate report. Yeah, fair enough. And can I just separate that it is Tribe Before You Buy, Mary, it's not Tribe Before You Rent. Try before you buy things, try before you buy. Not oh, before I understand that, uh, Councillor Moran. I was just being. Um, right. Um, anything else? Yeah, just briefly, Councillor Moran. Um, I'm just going to say that I think it's very important that we have a look at this and that we look at the options that are available to us. Stephen, would you like to introduce the item before we go to questions? No, would you like, okay. Would anyone like to have any further clarification on this issue, on this um, item or uh, any questions? No, okay, thank you. We'll move on. Item 5.3, Strategic Asset Management Plan. Yeah, we've okay, I haven't even got to open the chat. Members, can we actually just um, limit the discussion that we're having um, and the CERT committee at the moment? Um, and uh, Matthew, would you like to lead with anything on this um, item? No, does any... Um, Member, have any questions or any um, clarification requiring for this, Councillor Hyde? Yeah, just just wondering between the relationship between the SAMP, as I guess you call it, you probably call it, um, through the chair, uh, between the SAMP and the, the actual asset management plans. Once once this you know, is is all finalised, how long until those asset management plans are worked through? And is there sort of a work program? as to which asset management plans you tackle first and how, how is that going to happen and over what sort of time span? Thank you. Uh, through the Chair. Um, basically, the strategic asset management plan is the overarching framework. The individual asset management plans will be produced over the next uh, two years, uh, depending on um, and the order, I suppose, will be dependent on uh, the survey. So, in the back uh, survey that we've got here, it sort of identifies or asks the question which assets are more important. We'll use that information to, uh, I suppose, prioritise what asset categories come back in first. Um, and that can then also be discussed with council if they've got a priority around that as well. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Thank you, and uh, just acknowledge that um, probably the lack of questions is because it was a really good workshop the other week, so working through that. Can I just um, query that, I know this gives us the framework, but in terms of the time frame that we're looking at the various asset managements that fall underneath these that sit behind this, um, are we able to take a longer term view? So one of the things that obviously we're dealing with is that it's a rolling 10 year long-term financial plan which is why some of those major assets have now landed in our year 10 11 where they may not have been there you know three or four years ago so is there ability through this for us to take a, a longer view um through the chair um 
Yes, Lord Mayor, absolutely. Um, I think the intent is also part of this um, framework is that we are going to review the Azimuth Plan every year because we understand we plan for something, but then there are other things that happen throughout the year. So we will have the opportunity to review that um, on a yearly basis. And, you know, if you keep a 10 year view and you just push it on every year, you'll see these things come up in your long term vision while also addressing the situation of the current year, if that makes sense. Councillor Hyde. Yeah, um, I think I think the document's really good. I'd just be interested through the chair of, of feedback and noting that the principle is that we want to do enhancements through um, partnership, whereas previously we've done enhancements by ourselves, Vic Square, Robert Mall, Top of Mall, etc., etc. Um, how how or what would be the administration's view on how it could be worked into the SAM that um, uh, uh, renewals, uh, noting that we need to do them anyway, but that we might like to seek co-contributions for significant renew renewals, like a bridge and a weir and stuff. Um, is that is that? I know it's hard to build into a strategic overarching plan because the, you've got to fix the bridge, otherwise it falls down. But are we able to capture some of that in there? And how would you go about doing that? Yeah. So um, through the chair, I think in um, section five, there's um, the, the talk about the, uh, the funding levers and, and the, the partnerships there. Um, I can't see any reason why we can't um, embark on renewal and partnerships just based on renewals or just future and upgrade. Like, I mean, I think principally it's important to understand that we need to be funding our renewals where we can from our operating cash flow um, and the new and upgrades. It's more about a priority situation and where we are right now. It doesn't mean that we can't change that. Of course, we're not going to say no if someone offers funding to help us with that. Um, so it, we just have to consider all options. And if there is options to do that, then fantastic. But I think in principle, what we're concerned about is we don't want to be funding new and significant upgrades um, at the cost of things falling apart. That probably sort of leads on. That's a very good answer, thank you. Um, that, that leads me to sort of the next question, which is if another level of government through your chair came and said, uh, we're going to give you some, we'll pay half your bridge, for example, um, but we want to stimulate the economy, we want to build infrastructure now, we want you to do it next year. Now we've currently got it in year eight, nine, ten, or something like that. Um, Oh, are we at a point with our projections and, and noting our previously managed assets in the past, are we at a point where if we had juggled around some of that funding, like do we have the flexibility regarding the end of life of a lot of our assets to push, let's say, the bridge 25 mil we have to find to match their 25? Do we have the flexibility in, in, our, in our assumptions in our long-term financial plan to push 25 mil a year or two back and bring the you know money for the bridge forward is, is does that exist? Uh, thank you. So through the chair, there is flexibility within the long term financial plan to enable council to make those choices, um, but we're probably not quite at the stage yet where we'd be able to do that. So we do need the piece of work um, around each of the asset classes to come back. So we've got a much better sense of life cycle. Um, so I'd be I'd be sort of slightly conservative around our ability to be able to do that, but we are. Um, tying it a lot uh, closer to the long-term financial plan. So I think there's sort of parallel pieces of work happening. Um, I think this time, um, by the end of this calendar year, we'll probably be in a much better position to be able to workshop with council some of those opportunities. Thank you. Councillor Moran? Uh, yes. Uh, have we still got a... Uh, have we still got a you know, council before the council for last um, appointed a full-time staff member to whose sole job was to go to federal government, go to state, go to outside to find money. We did actually quite, I think, uh, the Lord Mayor were a GM then when we did that. Um, so do we still have a full-time member whose job it is to seek to hunt down funding? We did really well for a while. I gather that answer's not. Acting CEO? 
through the presiding members, I think you're referring to Anne Petch, who was yeah. quite sort of notorious here within the City of Adelaide for her ability to absolutely hunt down money. I think she worked part time, and although she wasn't on a um, no win, no fee type salary, uh, she was certainly very effective. Um, over the years, what we've done is transferred um, that skill set into more of the um, partnership um, arrangements. So, anyone that has a role or responsibility um, to um, deliver you know, major projects, it's certainly the focus is on partnerships as well. And we do try and channel it through um, the appropriate relationships, um, either politically or administratively. Um, one of the challenges we had um, many years ago was that staff were, um, you know, scattergun approach, um, uh, landing partnerships, but actually for priorities that weren't necessarily the same as councils. So what we try to do is make sure that we've got clear line of sight um, around council's priorities and then make sure that we're continually trying to seek appropriate funding to enable those to get delivered. Thank you. It seems to me, though, that after we got rid of that part-time staff member, we didn't get any more. Because if nothing focuses somebody, is is that's their job. Um, and I'm not really talking about partnership. I think the, I wanted to clarify something. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Oh, well, I'd certainly think that we've had um, many years of successful um, funding from state government, whether it was in relation to the four million per annum um, from uh, previous government around part time projects, market to Riverbank, which was 50 50. So there's certainly a good track record of continuing to land significant funding from other levels of government. Well, that may be, but um, on our agenda, we actually had an agenda item where this um, staff, part time staff member would do it. And I'm not, I, I think partnership, I'm not talking about it. I'm talking about going to the federal government and getting money out of them. They don't have to partner with us, just get this, the money in. I, I don't really like the word partnership. I, I think they give us a grant and we spend the money. Um, can I ask for you, um, Madam Chair, is there still the street dilapidation list that we spent millions trying to still got that? Um, also, I noticed in North Adelaide um, there's some quite sophisticated machinery um, going around. Is that a footpath dilapidation list? Um, also, undergrounding, is there still the ability that used to be the Plex? Plex? Is, that, is that still there in any way, shape or form? Yeah. Yes. We haven't been able to get that really, have we? Uh, black spot funding, have we achieved any of that recently? Yeah, because that's, that's quite a um, substantial amount of money. Um, uh, I was a little bit disappointed in the previous um, workshop that you had that there was such little corporate memory, um, except really the corporate memory seemed to be just the people that had been here. Um, I think the, it was said that the bridge, the other bridge hadn't been looked at for 100 years or I was here and it was practically rebuilt. Um, so we, have, you know, how, how do we cope with that? I mean, it's always, we've always been bad at corporate memory. Is there an attempt to sort of really see what happened 20, 30, 40 years ago with these long term? Because that was also the weir, and I remember, I think most of you remember as ratepayers, um, that we drained the torrents and found all cars and dead bodies and everything in it. Then we ruined the base of it. No, there was a dead body in it. And we also removed the topsoil, which led to us having the blue-green algae. Uh, and we also replaced both the wooden gates. But that doesn't seem to be listed historically anywhere. And I think it's very important that we do work out what we have done. I know it's a long time ago, but the Adelaide Bridge is certainly not at end of life because we have redone it, we tarred it, we... Um, just one moment, I think, uh, Tom, you wanted to clarify some of those comments? Through you, presiding member, and then support the two gentlemen down there, a, a little bit of corporate knowledge. So I've dealt with the weir opening on that monumental day. I've dealt with other things. Uh, in regards to the Adelaide Bridge, uh, I think the reason why it's certainly on their radar is not, not because it hasn't been attended to, it's based on asset condition and it's based on how they wish to respond to it. 
And uh, I would say, quite simply, when it comes to funding, that would be the first approach that they would look at, considering the significant amount of users are also the state's users, not just the city of Adelaide. So we'd certainly approach it that way. In regards to the weir, uh, quite simply, we did do a lot of work around the, the gates and whatever, but I think what the gentleman they're talking about is a, a very aging asset. We're talking about the main structure, looking at and how you actually do that. So if you don't throw capital into something, what happens is your maintenance budget increases because you have to spend... Okay, and I, totally, I totally understand that. Yeah. What I'm asking, Tom, is do we have... Um, do we go far enough back in these assets that really don't need a lot of work very you know, often? Um, so we, we have got that, have we? Um, what's the other one? I can't think now. Okay. Um, so I, I often find that we have a big turnover of staff, a big turnover of councillors. We almost get rid of half the councillors every election, more than half. And, um, and we seem to have a high turnover of staff too, like any big corporation. And I just think we should really concentrate on making sure we've got that corporate memory so it's not just some old croak like me that said, hang on, we did the bridge up 20 years ago. And then, uh, sorry, a young bloke like you, having been there 20 years ago, it shouldn't be, be like that. It should be dead present, you know, it's all there. And as I jokingly said, I'd really like to see um, Justin's wooden box. I mean, I seriously would like to see the wooden box, see what's in it, because we updated that. Clinton's, it was Clinton's wooden box. Oh, Clinton's wooden box. Is that why you look so vague when I said Clinton's wooden box? Okay, I really would like that wooden box. I shudder at that. Oh, oh, yeah, no, sorry, the other thing, one, one other thing. Did we get anywhere? Remember when, um, because of the COVID, the federal government was handing out money hand of the fist for community health things. Now, surely, uh, did, we, did we put our aquatic centre down there? Any luck? Uh, 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 sorry. <laughs> yes. Through your presiding member, uh, just to provide some insight into that, we actually provided two defence of these forms through infrastructure in Australia. Um, we got to the rejection in regards to their main infrastructure, but we went through the social infrastructure and still we didn't see responses. And we certainly have a, a very significant submission in with the state government through their COVID-19 stimulus package. And we're working very closely with the state government. Well, that's the that one, time. isn't it? Because that is a health thing. And it there's not many um, swimming pools in North, in no, sorry, in the north of that Lake Mount Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you. Oh, sorry, Councillor Brinkley. Sorry, Thank you. Uh, uh, just a quick question, following on from what uh, Councillor High was saying about um, certain um, items and the timing. Uh, my question is around consultation. So, do we? Um, sort of get any feedback or consult with um, agencies like DIT or Infrastructure SA or anyone like that in case they do have any sort of feedback that we can incorporate into um, into our SAN and then we know what's um, what's happening either in the new future or, or, uh, or long term. Thank you. Sorry, through the chair. Yes, um, so um, in relation to, to the feedback, I think, and also in relation to Councillor Hyde's comments earlier, you know, reshuffling things and moving things forward, we just got to make sure that we give ourselves appropriate time because one thing is the budget to consider, but to actually plan and deliver some of these major infrastructure projects could take a couple of years. So we just got to make sure how that's, the, but it's also, um, we don't necessarily know what the option is right now. So we don't know necessarily if we're going to consult, what are we asking for? Um, so <clears throat> there's, a, I guess, a lot of work that we have to do before we get to that consultation piece. And, and, and we're not quite there yet, um, but obviously um, part of our due diligence will absolutely be to consult with um, various um, parties and, and state governments, etc. Yeah. Thank you. Councillor um, yeah, just picking up off that point, Chair, um, one thing I would like to see, and I apologise that I wasn't there for the, for the workshop, although I did watch it, um, uh, and it, was, it was very good to see the work committee as well. Um, uh, and picking up off JP's point, I, I do think, Chair, that we need to um, make sure we have things that are shovel-ready uh, 
uh, so that so that particularly maybe as we approach election time for state and federal elections, um, uh, we can have something in there that uh, another level of government with a bigger checkbook might actually think about funding. Um, now, how do you put that into your SAMP and, and what have you? I'm not the expert and I realise it's not this team's job to work out that timeline per se, but I think we do need to have some of that work done. I know there are two elections coming up. Um, and just, just lastly, just one final comment. Um, I do agree with Councillor Moran's observation that there is a bit of a lack of thoroughness when it comes to looking and hunting for money. Um, uh, you know, often I'm the one sending through the grants that have opened or are just about to close and saying, can't we apply for this? And the answer is sadly always no. So we do need that capability in the house. Would administration <laughs> like to respond to um, that, statement. that statement? I mean, I, I thought that we were only allowed to ask questions um, in this uh, form forum. Um, given the statement that's been made, I'd be interested to hear the, the well. It's not a discussion; it's a it's a question and answer. You can't debate. But I'd be very interested to hear the response of administration whether that is true that council does not seek. I understand. Applications yes. for uh, thank you through the chair. Um, I respectfully disagree with that with that statement. Um, absolutely we do look regularly and put in grant applications. Obviously it is helpful if it's sent through and if someone stumbles across something that we may not have necessarily had visibility on, that is helpful. Um, um, but I would um, absolutely reinforce the fact that we do regularly um, do grant applications. Um, one thing that we do balance is where sometimes the effort and time and cost of um, making an application for a grant can often outweigh, and the acquittal process can often outweigh um, the, the outcome that um, is sometimes being sought. So I would just like that as well. Any other questions or um, clarification in regards to the recommendation? No? Okay, thank you. We'll go to um, item 5.4, uh, Barton Terrace for West Landscaping. Would you like to um, introduce the item or straight to questions? Anyone has any questions or discussion in regards to the recommendation? No? Okay, thank you. Item 5.5, uh, the representation review options papers. So we have Daniel presenting today. Did you want to introduce the item at all? Yes. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, we've got Helen, uh, sorry, Sarah Gilmore from Holmes Dye here. Um, Sorry, Councillor. No, no, sorry, sorry Councilor, I would like to begin the rain, but I have to excuse myself. Yeah. I had an engagement. No worries. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. So we've got Sarah Gilmore from Holmes Dye here. Um, Sarah's the co consultant who helped um, compile a lot of the information that you find in the options paper today. Um, uh, for the benefit of members who weren't here last Thursday, um, we had Helen present um, the representation review options paper options to members before um, seeing the actual options paper. Um, uh, as part of this process, um, the options paper will be going out to community consultation for a period of roughly um, seven weeks, just under seven weeks time. Um, that's a statutory consultation process. Um, we're expecting obviously members uh, have a lot of questions about this process that we've brought um, Sarah along here. Any questions? Councillor Mackey? Uh, thank you, Chair. And forgive me, I, I attended the workshop and uh, found that very, very helpful. And I haven't had the opportunity to go through the actual report in fine detail. So just to cut to the chase. Um, in addition to uh, considering boundaries, wards, no wards, um, can you just fast track me to where the report is making comment regarding, if, if indeed the report is making comment regarding the number of elected members uh, that the community is being asked to to uh, consider? 
through the presiding member, I won't draw attention to particular pages because I don't have those flagged, but certainly the report does talk to um, the consultation that we did with the elected members where there was a general sense that potentially there could be a reduction of, of members. It then talks in the pros and cons to what that could look like. Um, there's sort of two issues there. One is the boundary issue and one is the representation issue. So essentially once you start looking at how you divide up those wards, it automatically gives you also a certain number that, that is appropriate. So that is where the numbers, um, they're reflected throughout the document, um, but the overall sense was potentially there could be a reduction. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Anyone else? Councillor Brinsley? Just a um, quick question about the consultation. So there was, um, I don't know if it was an email or somewhere that I read that elected members are to stay at um, arm's length um, when it comes to the consultation. So does that mean that um, uh, are we able to sort of go on social media and say that this is after consultation, get, get on board, or we can't do that? So where, where, where is the line? Just As, so. Well, I'll let um, uh, you clarify that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Chair. And through the Chair, so we'd be more than happy to encourage you to um, spread this around your community that the consultation will be open. Um, however, gearing your community or your constituents to a particular option might be perceived as a conflict of interest. Um, so just to protect members, um, we're asking, obviously, make your community aware of the process, um, but to not gear them not towards any options. That's correct. Thank you. Agency, or did you want to on that one? No. Any other questions? No, everyone's clear on that. So this is going out for consultation and it will come back in after the consultation and uh, we'll be able to discuss that further then. So understanding, yeah, in regards to what the consultation came up with, correct? Yeah, that's correct. Um, through the chair, so you'll in, uh, be able to address all the community feedback and then take ownership of an in principle option um, that you find in the paper. Um, with that in principle option, it will go out for a further three week statutory consultation um, where the public will be invited directly to speak to you in chamber. Um, after that, um, that in principle preferred option, if it is adjusted or stays the same, goes to the Electoral Commissioner for certification at the next. Uh, at the next election, um, you will uh, have action to those changes by that period of time. Just a question, are you bound to only those six options after the consultation has taken place? Can you discuss other options or put forward other options? Through the presiding member, um, what we would anticipate through the consultation is that there will be a lean towards one of the six options. Um, it doesn't prevent other options being looked at, provided they achieve everything that's in the Act. So it's not just a matter of redrawing the lines or picking some new numbers. It still needs to achieve all of the things that are out in the legislation. So there's um, clauses around communities of interest and a whole diversity of things that the Electoral Commissioner will expect to see have been considered. Thank you. Any other questions? Discussion? No. Thank you. Um, item 5.5. Uh, oh no, sorry, 5.6, uh, Delegations for uh, the Planning, Development and Infrastructure Act 2016. Dan, is that your Yeah. Would you like to introduce it? Any, no? any questions or any clarification in regards to the recommendation? No? That's great, thank you. So there are no other, other items. Uh, thank you all for coming along tonight. And um,